Welcome to Backyard Basics. I'm Guy LeBlanc. Today I'm going to talk about two tree care problems common in Central Texas. And the first are these plants here, commonly referred to as ball moss. Now these are found on a variety of tree species in the Gulf states and in Central Texas, most commonly on live oak and cedar elm. Ball moss is not a true moss, but is actually in the bromeliad family. This means it's related to orchids. It spreads by means of a windblown seed, very much like dandelion. Very little research has been done on ball moss, but it's not believed to be parasitic. As an air plant, it's believed that it receives its nutrition through air and rainfall. However, most arborists in the Austin area, including myself, believe that when present in heavy quantities, ball moss can cause slow decline in plants by shading out sunlight from the leaves. Heavy quantities of ball moss can also increase the surface area for ice accumulation, and this can lead to an increased number of broken branches. For these reasons, I highly recommend removing moss before it becomes too heavy in the tree. Two methods are typically used for this, spraying and manual removal. In my opinion, spraying is far less effective. You only kill about 60% of the moss, and the moss will stay on the trees for several months until it decays enough to fall off of the tree. One of the chemicals commonly used for this purpose is baking soda. While this sounds benign, the alkalinity and salinity of baking soda can cause soil chemistry problems. Another chemical commonly used is copper hydroxide. However, copper hydroxide is toxic to aquatic plants and we can't use it near waterways. Also, its bright blue color can stain light-colored objects near the tree being sprayed. More recently, potassium bicarbonate is showing some promise. However, this is not readily available in large quantities, and like baking soda, is not labeled for this use. For these reasons, I highly recommend manual removal. In heavily infested trees, about 60% of the moss is going to be on dead branches, and these should be removed for the health of the plant anyway. Judicious pruning can remove nearly 100% of the moss. However, this last point is very critical. It's important to remove not too much of the foliage when doing this type of pruning. If we remove too much foliage, not only are we defeating the purpose, but we're harming the tree. The second problem I'm going to talk about today are root sprouts on live oaks. Although live oaks produce acorns like all other oaks, their main method of propagation is through root sprouting. However, these root sprouts can cause problems in our landscapes when thousands of them are generated around the trunk of a mature tree. Unfortunately, almost no research has been done on the control of root sprouts, but there is some evidence that they develop in response to an elevated grade. This is another reason not to put too much soil or even too much mulch around the base of a tree. I find that you can be fairly aggressive in physically removing these sprouts, but it's important not to remove more than about a third of an inch of, in diameter. You should never use herbicide for this purpose. Absorption of the herbicide could cause significant dieback in the tree. Also, it's not necessary to paint the sprouts after they've been removed. I find that landscape fabric and about two inches of mulch will greatly inhibit sunlight after you've removed the sprouts. However, once they've developed, it's nearly impossible to permanently eliminate sprouts from the trunk of your tree. For Backyard Basics, I'm Guy LeBlanc.